as other groups have mentioned before, when you, students are in the real world, things are not broken down into subject areas. And uh, especially at the high school level, I know at the elementary school level, they're a lot more integrated. But at the high school level, we're very clear. You're doing science, you're doing math, you're doing social studies. And we're trying to break that down. We're trying to integrate all the classes into one. Between the four curriculum that are all interconnected, we have a bunch of different things that we're doing within each individual one. Um, so for English 10, uh, students come in, they do a base assessment. Some of them run more of a foundations level program. Some of them run honors and some of them run the regular, but they're allowed through the personalized learning to go as deeply and intently into a subject matter as they want. And we tie most closely to Socials 10. So Owen and I teach the, sit, the class in our Block 2 section. Sometimes we have complete cohesion. For example, the students um, wrote an essay or an argumentative piece about Louis Riel. So I was marking the English component and Owen was mar marking the Socials component. Um, ultimately, we're moving away from a standard deliver model to a more hands-on approach. So a lot of the kids get to choose both how they want to learn and how they want to demonstrate their learning. One of our first big projects we worked on the students with, we called it the Great Trains Project. And we were tying in aspects of Social Studies 10, basic around the, the CPR railway. Um, but the English component is there as well, talking to individual workers. What was it like to work there? Um, the planning portion, talking about worker safety. It's amazing to compare it to some of the modern industries and talk about the number of people that died building the railway and whether those would be acceptable standards today. And finally, we were able to tie in the Science 10 curriculum as well, looking at velocity and acceleration and how do the trains physically move. So we can tie in all the four curricula at different points. And depending on, we had actually had the students working directly with the PLO, so they could see, here's the things you need to learn from each section. How are you meeting these needs? And different students are meeting them in different ways, some of them through videos, some of them through writing, some of them through graphs, however they chose to meet those PLOs. And definitely there were some students who were able to meet those PLOs easier than other ones, the other students. So they're, they're helping out the students, so the ones who are struggling with it a little bit more. Some of our other cross-curricular projects were one we called the thinkering, and I love this word of Michelle's, where they're, they're brainstorming ideas they're trying to come up with, and then once they find an area they're passionate about, they can follow that. And I've heard other groups talk about that as well. And it was neat to see the whiteboards and the blackboards all covered with different ideas, and over a couple days they sort of narrowed down to a few more focused ones, and the students chose to present those in different ways. They also had a, an English project later on that they were experimenting with, and then a Project Earth one at the very end that was basically had to involve something along with the environment. So whether you're looking at sustainability, in the ecology parts of Science 10, you're looking at human geography aspects of social studies, there's lots of ways of tying in careers or the English aspects in there as well. And once again, they're working directly with the PLOs to show, here's, here are the, the goals that I'm meeting for this particular project. 